Hello everybody, I'm Jessica River and today I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite games of all time. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Now this is Roller Coaster Tycoon, not Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Um, I know the second game is a lot more popular than the first game, but this is the original 1999 Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yeah, this game came out before the year 2000. It's that old. Um, and I used to play this as a kid. And it was my favorite game back then, and it's still one of my favorite games today. Okay, so you first start off the game with this cute little title screen, and you have a couple different maps that you can play in this game. Oh my god, this music is so nostalgic. So we're going to be doing Forest Frontiers, and that is the main basic map um, that most people start off with, and we have an objective, and our, our objective is to have at least 250 guests in your park at the end of October year number one, with a park rating of at least 600. So every map has an objective like this one and you have to complete it in order to unlock more items and more maps. And this game has a really good progression system. It's really good at making you want to play more and unlock more things uh, to put in your parks. So one of the first things I always do is build a carousel. And the reason I build a car- uh, <laughs> The reason I build a- <laughs> Oh my god, I can't speak. The reason I build a carousel is because it it has nice music, which the guests like, and it's cheap. And it's just a simple ride, you don't have to do anything crazy with it, you just pop it down and it's there. I then like to have a separate area for concession stands and bathrooms. Um, just so I have a place to put benches and trash cans that is separate from the main path. And another thing I like to do is create a main path that just goes straight through the center of the park and not have too many branches off of the path. And the reason I do this is because the guests in this game unfortunately get lost very easily. Um, even when you sell maps, like the guests, they just, they just kind of go in circles sometimes. Um, cause you know, it is an old game and their artificial intelligence isn't that great. <laughs> So yeah, I just make a separate area for concessions and then the rest of the path links to all of my rides. Oh, look at the little people, they're so cute. You have different types of rides. So the carousel is a normal, boring ride and then the swinging ship is a thrill ride. And then roller coasters are even like more thrilling rides. There's a lot of math in this game. This game on the surface is very simple, but you can go a lot deeper with it. And that's one of the reasons why I love this game so much. You also have a lot of scenery items and that will up the value of your park. So I like to put in a lot of those, um, especially the more expensive ones because they up your value even more. You also need to hire staff. Um, just like a regular amusement park, you have to have people to help you run it. So um, you have you have handyman and they clean up the park and mow the grass. And then you have mechanics and then they take care of your rides for you and check on them and fix them. And then you have security guards which help with security around the park. It keeps your guests from like breaking benches. And then you also have entertainers and they help up the value of your park, but they're the most expensive. You can also assign each member of staff a specific task so I can have one guy mowing the grass, uh, one guy cleaning up trash cans, and another guy sweeping the path. Okay, and then after I have at least one uh, boring ride and one thrill ride, I usually like to put in a roller coaster because roller coasters are the best in this game. Um, they're the best because they're cool and also they really up the value of your park and your guests love them. They always want to go on a roller coaster, just probably why the game is called Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yeah, roller coasters are really good in this game, so as soon as I have enough money to make a roller coaster, I always put one down. Um, this particular one that I'm putting down is a already made model, so I didn't have to make this roller coaster myself. It's just a pre-made model and I just fit it into the space that I want it to be in and 
it's there and ready to go. Now luckily I have a lot of land in this map so I have a lot of room right now to put pretty much whatever coaster I want down but as the game progresses and uh, I get less and less space I'm going to need to become more creative with um, how I put my rides on the land. You always want to make sure you have an entrance and an exit and I like to use the blue path for the entrances and the brown path for the exits just so I can kind of color coordinate into where everything is. So I put a slide here because it could fit in this little space which is awesome because like I said you want to definitely save as much room as possible. And you can change it to where you can have like I think like 15 people on this slide at once which is kind of crazy. <laughs> that would not fly in a real park. <laughs> Okay, so I know I'm not gonna be able to fit any more rides in this space, so I'm going to fill it up with a bunch of scenery items instead. I love just watching the people on the roller coaster. Like, I don't know, it's just so fun to watch them scream and see the roller coaster go around the tracks. Okay, so here I'm doing a custom car ride, and there are a couple of um, rides like this that aren't roller coasters that you can customize. Uh, the car ride is one of my favorites um, because it's just, it's a very easy ride to make. Um, even in the customization, it's just very simple. So I usually always put one in my park and the guests really like it. Also, you can change the color of all of your rides, um, or at least most of all your rides. And in this car ride, you can change the cars themselves um, individually. So I like to do a rainbow pattern with the cars just because I think it's cool. And then I threw down some palm trees because, you know, why not? <laughs> okay, so now we're starting to look like a real park, kinda. <laughs> we've got a couple of decent rides and we've got some scenery and quite a few guests are coming into our park now. We are also already at 190 guests, which is awesome. <laughs> Speaking of guests, let's check how they're feeling today. And yes, you can look at your people's thoughts and you can even categorize them to see what most of your guests are thinking. So here it looks like our guests think that Roller Coaster 1 is a really good value and that means we can probably up the price of that roller coaster and make more money off of it. So I still have a decent amount of money so I'm going to throw down a couple more rides and a few more concession stands. Alright, and now I'm going to attempt to make a big roller coaster. And I say attempt because I'm running low on money. Now you can take out a loan in this game, um, but you need to make sure that you uh, pay that back. Um, the loans aren't too bad, but you do, I believe, pay interest on them. So yeah, you want to pay those back when you can. But for now, I'm just going to spend all the money I need to make this giant ass roller coaster. We don't want to go too crazy because if the ride is too thrilling. Uh, the guests get sick and then they throw up all over your sidewalk, which we do not want. So um, I'm going to make this a thrilling ride, but not too thrilling of a ride. And the main way I do that is by not having a curve right next to a hill. And I always put in some brakes and then connect it to the end. Now we get to test the roller coaster to see if it works. Or we could just open it and um, the guests can test the roller coaster and see if it works. <laughs> okay, so here they go. Oh boy. Oh wow, okay, so this is actually a lot slower than I thought it would be. <laughs> this is a very non-thrilling ride. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have been that careful. <laughs> oh well. Uh, let's change the color. Make it cool looking. Okay, so now we almost have 500 guests in our park, but we are low on money. So um, hopefully we can up the price of some of these and get some more money and then we can build more rides to get more guests. And you can kind of see how all of this plays out. Um, there are so many options in this game and so many different things you can try. Personally, I like to make a park of really high value and try to get at least like a thousand guests in my park. The game calculates how many years your parks have been open and how many months your parks have been open. And you do have different temperature and different weather and you'll see that probably here in a little bit because it can rain and it can storm in this game. 
You can also assign your workers to walk on certain areas of the path, and I usually do this with the handyman. Because they sweep the path, um, I usually want them around the roller coaster area by the exit because that's where a lot of people um, have accidents after going off of a really thrilling roller coaster. Okay, and now we have enough for a steel roller coaster, so I'm going to put in a loop de loop. And I love this ride, it's just so fun looking. Okay, so right now I'm checking the park rating of our park, and we are already at 848. Oh my gosh, like we are doing really well for just like not being that far into the game. And we now have 680 guests, so we have already completed our objective. However, we have to maintain that objective until the time set on the objective. So I'm putting in a tower here just to make sure I keep up attendance in my park. Okay, and now we are at the end of October year first, and we won! Yay! Everybody clap! <laughs> oh my god, I love the little people. <laughs> So yeah, that's how you pretty much play the game, and we can continue to add on to this park and play it more if we wanted to. The objectives are mainly there to help you unlock new things in the game, um, but you can try to pass your previous park goals. As you can see here, we have a company value of 3,449, and we can continue to try to up the value of our park, which is what I like to do, just to kind of be competitive with myself and see how far I can go. You can also find like a bunch of tutorials on YouTube of how people try to cheat the system. Like I said, there's a lot of layers to this game, like holy crap, like there's so much stuff you can do and there's a lot of math involved. <laughs> Okay, and now that I have shown you all how to create your um, own park and complete an objective, I would now like to show you some of my better parks. Let's start with Dynamic Heights, which has a company value of 7,800. <laughs> and you can tell I've played this game a lot. So I believe I've already completed the objective of this park. Yes, I have, okay. So, um, yeah, there is a lot going on with this park. You only have a limited amount of space in this particular park, but I ended up putting in a whole bunch of roller coasters. So even though it's a smaller park, um, I was able to get a really high company value by putting in as many roller coasters as possible. We also have water rides in this one. Company value is pretty high. Rides um, give us a pretty good amount of revenue. So yeah, we make a lot of profit from this particular park. I basically just crammed in as many roller coasters as I could and as many like little rides around the roller coasters as I could. And that's how I got this uh, park value as high as it is. Okay, and now we're gonna look at one of our prettier parks. I believe this is, yeah, Evergreen Gardens. Um, this park map is already like really pretty looking and it's really big. So you have a lot of opportunity here. However, I do like to try to cut off the paths when I first start using this park because otherwise like the guests get really lost in this park because of all the different um, areas that they can go into. <laughs> I usually like to try to keep the past as simple as possible and just put a lot of decorations and um, make this particular park look really pretty because it's already like really pretty. They already have like a lot of like cute like unique designs with the scenery items so I like to just keep this one pretty and simple. And you can also see guests holding balloons in this one, which is awesome. Like I love to give the guests different souvenirs and you'll see them holding them, which is really cute. Oh yeah, and you can change um, the scenery even more with different types of land and you can raise and lower the land and you can add water. <laughs> I forgot to mention that.
Okay, and now the moment that many of you have probably been waiting for. Uh, we're gonna make a park that is a complete and utter disaster <laughs> and we gonna kill some peeps because why not? So I'm making a coaster that is designed to fail. And you can do this. You can make a coaster that um, will crash <laughs> and go off the rails. <laughs> so that is what we're doing and we're going to get some people on it and yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm designing um, one that goes straight down and then curves and then goes straight up. Yep, there it goes. It can't go over that hump. So it's going to go back down, and then the other cart is also going to go down, and boom! Splash. And all of the pixels just fly everywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this game. Oh yeah, and you can also have water in this game, so we're going to make a little pond right by the exit. So guests will come out of that exit and basically um, fall into the water, and uh, they can't swim, so yeah! If they survive the roller coaster, um, they will not survive leaving the roller coaster. <laughs> then I'm going to make a hill here and put a carousel on top. And we are going to have another little pond at the end of this carousel. So this is the carousel of death that leads to the pond of death. Okay, so I was having a hard time getting the guests to go on the roller coaster. I forgot that after your roller coaster blows up, um, your guests don't want to go on it. I tried changing the name and um, repainting it and like rebuilding it, but the guests still aren't going on. So I'm just going to show you all it, it exploding again, um, this time in different pretty colors. Because, you know, why not? But yeah, here's a different angle of basically what would happen if guests were on it. <laughs> but I did catch them um, falling to their death into the water, which is great. <laughs> so we can at least watch them drown. <laughs> oh my god. Also, you can pick up people in this game. Um, normally, like, you'd have like a little claw hand, but um, my mouse doesn't show up, which I'll explain later. So um, you pick up the little peoples and then you drop them into water and then they drown. The last thing I want to show you all before I forget is uh, you can have a bathroom and charge people $20 to be able to use it, which is amazing. <laughs> Overall, like, oh my gosh, I just, I love this game so much. Um, it's just so fun. There's so much stuff you can do in this game, like, holy crap, like, I don't know how to fit all of it into one video. The last thing I want to talk about real quick is that this is a very old game, obviously, and it was really hard to film. That's actually why my mouse doesn't show up on screen, is that I couldn't find a way for it to show up on screen. Like, I tried everything just to try to be able to record this game like holy crap i finally got um fraps to be able to work on this game but you can't see the numbers in the corner um normally like there's there's numbers that show up and i believe that's your frame rate and it will show you your frame rate um but they just won't appear for whatever reason because of the way this game layers on top of your computer screen it just won't work for whatever reason and even though i have it turned on on fraps to show my mouse and record my mouse um it just won't show up for whatever reason um somebody probably knows more about that than i do so um you should look that up but yeah i went through a lot of hoops just to try to record uh this old cd old cd rom but yeah i finally got to work um so if you ever want to uh, record this game, definitely use Fraps. It was the one program I got to work on it. And also, I believe there are some links online to this game, um, which you can play for free. So if I can find that, I'll put that in the uh, description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, this is one of my favorite games of all time. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys again next time. Bye!